Shalom. I'm going to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashim, Yahushar Bashim, Kakwadash. That one is to my teachers, the elder apostles of the great Muslim, Ruel. And as always, peace and salutations to the whole four elect tabernacle of David scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And um, I just want to say, you know, the times that we're coming into, you know, we're coming into uh, trying times where you have uh, the dragon, you know, you know, he's starting to oppress the holy nation, the nation of Israel. You know, he's, uh, you know, coming down with his uh, iron fist, you know, with the mandates, you know, trying to, you know, enchant us with those uh, pharmacia potions. And now he's uh, given the ultimatum, you know, either, uh, you know, comply and submit or, uh, you know, lose your livelihood, lose, you know, your job or, you know, whatever it is that you depend upon for st sustainability. So it's going to get pretty difficult. And in these times, you know, this is when you want to really communicate. You know, you want to, you know, constantly talk to the Heavenly Father. And uh, even in times when you may not be necessarily, you know, in an environment where you can, you know, speak out in the open to the Heavenly Father. But when the scriptures say, Pray without ceasing. That means, you know, basically you can pray anytime throughout the day. And even if you don't say it out loud, if you don't speak it with your with your mouth, you can pray from your mind. That counts as well. Silent prayers from the mind is also accepted with the Heavenly Father. And I'm um, in his lesson, I want to, you know, prove that. Because, you know, we're going to definitely need to continue, you know, to, uh, you know, pray. And these trying times, you know, that's one of our weapons that we're going to need, prayer. All right, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to start with Yahweh Shai. When he was talking to his disciples, you know, concerning not being a hypocrite. And uh, when he told them to pray, he showed them, you know, how to pray and what's uh, acceptable to the Heavenly Father. So this is uh, Matthew 6 and verse 5. It says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. All right, and you have, you know, a lot of fake and phony, you know, uh, men out there you know, that, that pretend to be humble and they'll, you know, say prayers out in the open, you know, just to appear like they're seeking the Lord, but really they're full of shit. You know, because you have the wicked scribes and Pharisees and actually uh, Yahweh Shai, you know, he even uh, did a parable in which uh, you had one man who, when he said his prayer to the Lord, it was almost like he was, uh, you know, bigging himself up. You know, he was humble bragging about, you know, the things that he's not doing. He said that he pays his tithes and, you know, he doesn't commit adultery. He doesn't do this. He's not like this uh, publican over here. And you had the other uh, guy, which was the publican. And, you know, he, you know, he didn't even lift his head. You know, he, he had his, you know, head to the, to the ground, you know. And matter of fact, let, let me go to that real quick. Because when you, when you pray, you want to be as humble as you can be, you know, and also when you do pray, you're supposed to believe that you're going to receive of the things that you ask because you're asking in the name of the only, of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, right? Uh, let me get uh, is it Luke 18, you know, just to make the example. <clears throat> Yep, Pharisee and, and the and the publican. Here's the example right here. Luke 18 and 9, it says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. 
two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, the most high power, I thank thee that I am not as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterous, or even as this publican. So this guy was actually exalting himself, you know, right before the Lord. And that's why Yahweh Shai said, you are they which justify yourselves before uh, men. But that which is esteemed uh, among men is an abomination in the sight of the Most High. All right. So we have to come to the Lord with the attitude that we know that, you know, we're, we we fall short. And we, we, we need mercy. We needed Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, The most high power, Yahweh, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And that's the point. You know, so when you pray, you know, you don't want to be seen of men. You don't want to look like a hypocrite, you know, trying to appear like you're righteous. All right. So it says, verily I say unto you, they, ha they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which is in secret, shall reward thee openly. And guess what? You don't have to necessarily enter into a, a closet to pray to the Heavenly Father. You can pray in your mind. And when you get in your car and you drive in eastbound, you can start sending them up. You know? The Lord is receiving anything that, that you know, you're sending up even in your mind. Because the Lord, he ponders the heart, do we not? All right, it even tells you that. Let me go to Psalms. 44 and 21 real quick. Let me go there real quick. Psalms 44 and 21. <clears throat> you know, you bear with me while I, you know, wait for it to, to pop up. Sometimes the blue letter be tripping. Yep. Of course. Keep trying. Yep. On the third try. That's the spirit. So uh, let me let me try that again. And let's go to uh Psalms forty four and twenty one. Which shows that the Heavenly Father, you know, he reads your your heart, which is your mind. Uh, we always break it down what the heart actually means. And you look up heart. In the Hebrew, the word is lab, which means your mind. All right. This is uh, Psalms 44 and 21. It says, Shall not the Most High search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. So that's a that's a secret place, your mind. So you can even think out your prayers. And when you're thinking it out, the Lord is, 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 is receiving it. All right. Now... An example to show that, you know, at times, you know, when you, you might pray without actually, you know, voicing out your prayer, your lips might move, but it's still, you know, going forth, you know, from out of your mind and the Heavenly Father is receiving it. Now, let's go to First Samuel because you'll see that example in uh, um, King Samuel's uh it's like your prophet Samuel, I said King Samuel, prophet Samuel, his mother, Hannah. All right. Now, let's uh, real quick. Let's go down. And I'm going to just get straight to the point because, uh, you know, what you read about dealing with Hannah, you know, she was uh, depressed. You know, she was uh, heavy in the spirit because um, Samuel's father. 
he had two wives, which, you know, she was one of the wives and the other wife, you know, she was basically bearing his children, but Hannah was barren. She couldn't have his seed. And we know back then, you know, to, to, to bear seed, you know, that was uh, one of the primary purposes of being a wife was bringing forth a seed, you know? So she was devastated that she couldn't uh, have any seed. She couldn't conceive seed. So what did she do? She prayed. So this is uh, 1 Samuel 1. And um, I'll start at verse... I'll start at verse 7. It says, As he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. So the other wife, you know, she kept rubbing it in, you know, poking fun at her because, you know, she couldn't have his children even though she was, uh, you know, she was able to. So that actually vexed her and, you know, she went and excused herself from, from dinner, you know, only to, you know, go and, and cry to the Lord. So this is a verse 8. It says, Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her Hannah, Why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not, am not I bitter? It's like it better to thee than ten sons. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in the bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Yahweh of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give unto him the Lord all the days of thy of like all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head, meaning he would uh, be a Nazarite. And it came to pass as he as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. You know what? He observed her mouth. He saw that her lips was moving. Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. So right there, that shows you that she prayed, talking to the Heavenly Father, but it wasn't out, you know, it wasn't voiced. It was silent. So she was praying in her mind. And guess what? The Lord still answered her. See? So silent prayers are also accepted with the Heavenly Father. All right? Now let's go from there to Romans 8. Because we got to remember also your spirit make intercession for you as well. All right, Romans 8 verse 26. It says, likewise, the spirit also help if our infirmities, you know, our, our weaknesses, you know, whatever demons that we're struggling to fight with, well, your spirit is, is willing, it's just your flesh is weak. So even your spirit utters, you know, things to the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son. You know, it says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that search of the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of the Most High. So even Yahweh Shai knows, you know, what you have need of. And he's praying on your behalf. Okay. So, hey, we, we're going to definitely need this in these trying times that we're uh, getting ready to come into. You know. Constant prayer. All right, we have the Day of Atonement coming up, you know, pretty soon. Well, we're going to have to afflict our souls. And that's when our prayers are really received, you know, when we're in our afflicted, humbled estate. All right? Because it, it, the scriptures tell you that uh, the, 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 the humble prayers of, of the, the, the prayers of the humble pierces the clouds. All right, as a matter of fact, let me let me go to. Uh, Let's go to a uh, Sarat 35th chapter. Let 
we're going to go to our rot 35. And we're going to go down to verse. I'll start at verse uh, 14. Matter of fact, I'll start at 13. Because, you know, the scriptures say the Lord hears the cries of, of the righteous and delivers all of them out of their afflictions. And we know this devil is getting ready to afflict us. All right. We see we see where it's all going. Pretty soon it's going to be persecution. Because, you know, brothers is, is, is despite, you know, what this devil is trying to do with the mandates. We're not going to we're not going to uh, budge, man. You know, we, we won't be willing to walk away from everything. We're not going to budge. So the only thing left for this devil is, is to persecute. OK, he's going to pull a, a Antiochus Epiphanes, which that might be him coming back. He just got dementia right now. You know, but either way, the Lord's gonna uh, hear us, cause we definitely gonna be crying out to Him. Matter of fact, let me get uh, let me get Isaiah nineteen. Isaiah nineteen verse twenty, and it says. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, which, we, you know, we're in the modern Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. And he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. And we know that that great savior is uh, Yahweh Shai. He's going to come and deliver us from this Egypt. All right. But it says that they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. All right, this devil, he, he's, he's a straight up oppressor, man. He's our number one oppressor, Esau. All right. He's trying to make, he, he's passing laws to try to make us go off. And he's trying to defile us, defile our, our spirits, our souls. He's trying to really take us out. So this is uh, Sirach 35. And verse uh, 13, it says, he will not accept any person against a poor man, but will hear the prayer of the oppressed. He will not despise the supplication of the fatherless, nor the widow, when she pour out her complaint. Do not the tears run down the widow's cheeks, and is not her cry against him that causes them to fall? Uh, you, hey, you sisters, man. You know, the Lord will hear you too. It says, he that serves the Lord shall be accepted with favor and his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. The prayer of the humble pierce of the clouds until it come nigh, he will not be comforted and will not depart till the most high shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. So the Lord is not going to, you know, he's not going to hold back, man. Once he hears the cries of, of, of his uh, elect. The Lord's going to start moving. What she already hears are our cries. Man, we complain continually to him. It says the souls of the just complain continually, man. Sign and crying for all the abominations that be done in the midst. And, 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 you know, calling for the Lord to hurry up and send judgment upon his place. You know, send judgment, send death, send evil upon our enemies, upon uh, Adawam, upon uh, the Gawayam. You know, the Yab Yanawa, our enemies. And guess what? The Lord hears that. It says, For the Lord will not be slack, neither will the mighty be patient toward them, till he have smitten and sundered the loins of the unmerciful and repaid vengeance to the heathen, till he have taken away the multitude of the proud and broken the scepter of the unrighteous. And that's what the Lord's uh, going to ultimately do. It says, till he have rendered to every man according to his deeds and to the works of men according to their devices, their evil, wicked devices, their plots, their plans, which is basically to uh, overthrow the nation of Israel, man. Cut us off from being a nation that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance, man. All right. It says, till he have judged the cause of his people and made them to rejoice in his mercy. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction as clouds of rain in the time of drought. 
And that's what we're seeking for. We're seeking for the Lord's mercy. Okay? So, hey, pray without ceasing. And the Lord's going to, you know, answer us. All we have to do is make our requests known to the Father. And don't doubt. So, uh, you know, Lord willing, I hope this was edifying. I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honesty, to the next lesson. Shalom.